Good morning. Good morning. I'm pleased to be joined this morning by Ryan Deckert from the Oregon Business Association, Duncan Wise from the Oregon Business Council, and John Mollis from the Oregon State Building and Construction uh, Trades Council. Pursuant to Section 12, Article 5 of the Oregon Constitution, this morning I am exercising my authority to call the Legislative Assembly to convene in special session on Friday, December 14th, 2012 at 9 o'clock in the morning. I do not make this extraordinary decision lightly, but Oregon uh, has an extraordinary opportunity to boost our economy, uh, to create jobs, and to deliver on the central pillars of the Oregon Business Plan, to create jobs, to drive our per capita income back up above the national average, and to reduce poverty in our state while generating revenue to support important public services uh, like education. I've discussed this remarkable opportunity with co-speaker Roblin, with co-speaker Hanna, with speaker-elect Kotek, with President Courtney, and with Republican leader Senator Ferrioli. And we are all in agreement that this matter deserves our immediate attention. Nike is ready to commit to a significant expansion of their Oregon operations. Nike's employ employment in Oregon has increased 60% since 2007, paying an average wage of $101,000, which is roughly twice the state and regional average. A recent analysis by AECOM, a global financial services company, estimates that the potential economic impact of the proposed expansion would be over $2 billion a year, creating over 12,000 jobs by 2020, with uh, construction accounting for $440 million and 2,900 jobs alone. This is a huge win for the state of Oregon. The company is seeking assurance that the state won't change its tax rules after making this extraordinary new investment. And to me, that's a very easy call. It is a perfect fit for our strategy to retain and grow companies, to create jobs, to increase per capita income, and drive poverty in our state back down to 10% by 2020. To secure that commitment, I am proposing creating a new economic development tool for Oregon, and I will be bringing to the legislature the Economic Impact Investment Act for their immediate consideration. This act would allow the governor to enter into an agreement with any company that commits to create a minimum of 500 jobs and make a minimum capital investment of $150 million over a five-year period. Essentially, what we're proposing is simply providing business with certainty that when they make a major investment in job creation and in capital expenditures, the current method of business income taxation can be relied on for a negotiated period of time. For a state like Oregon that has serious budget constraints, this is a powerful new economic development tool that does not require the expenditure of new revenue in order to implement. In fact, it will create revenue by creating new jobs and new revenue for important public services. And I want to emphasize once again that beyond the issue of this particular company, this is an important tool for Oregon because we don't have the resources or the magnitude of resources of a state like, say, California or New York to try to woo new companies. This gives us something else, and I would argue something better, a predictable investment climate. Now, why call a special, special session now? What is the urgency that would compel me to take this extraordinary step? The fact is that Nike is a homegrown company. It is one of two Fortune 500 companies headquartered in the state of Oregon. They are planning a very large expansion. The company is growing rapidly. They have to expand somewhere, and they have to do it soon. And the fact is, they are being heavily courted by other states and other locations. But they are prepared to sign an agreement now to expand here in Oregon. They are prepared to commit to a very serious long-term investment in capital and job creation if we can give them certainty on the investment climate for a negotiated period of time. To me, that seems imminently reasonable. As a business poly policy and as a state that still has a 10.6% unemployment rate and still doesn't have the resources we need to be reinvesting in the entire enterprise of public education. Getting Oregonians back to work remains my top priority. Clearly, private sector job growth and job creation will be the foundation for an enduring prosperity, but the state of Oregon has an important role to play by creating an investment climate that will attract and grow the right kind of businesses. That's exactly what we're doing today, and I uh, am hoping the legislature will act uh, expeditiously on this matter uh, this coming Friday. Thank you.
Governor, why, why do a special session rather than wait a month when the whole legislature is going to be here anyway? As I said, there is a sense of urgency. Uh, I would say the uh, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. This is a very important company to Oregon. Uh, it is a company that is growing rapidly, and as I said, they have to make this move as soon as possible for their own internal business reasons. Um, they're being courted by a number of other states, uh, but they've said that uh, if we can provide them certainty on their investment climate, they'll sign on the dotted line now, and we want to make sure they stay in Oregon. Where are they going to expand? I don't know. Governor, do you know what the expansion is? It's, it's an expansion of their operations. I don't know the details, but uh, they're running out of room. You know, the company's growing rapidly. I would uh, give you one other reason that's very, very important to keep that particular company here in, in Oregon. Uh, I can't overemphasize the importance to the larger Oregon business community of having nonstop direct flights uh, to Asia and to Europe. Uh, the Nike um, uh, employees uh, are part of what keeps that flight stable. And with an expansion of this magnitude, I think we can really firm up those nonstop flights to Europe and to Asia, which are critically important, not just to, to Nike, but to a whole host of other Oregon businesses. Was that a factor in Alaska's uh, direct flights to Reagan National Airport? I have no idea, but I'm really glad they've got one. Mm -hmm. was, there, was there some indication that, that something would happen? Does this have to do with the single cells factor? Is that, that yeah, that's, that's one, of the, one of the issues, absolutely. And was there any indication that that would somehow change? I mean, it's been the, the state policy for uh, or code for years, I think. No, I don't think there's any discussion of changing the single sales factor. Uh, but you know, this is a traded sector state. Uh, we depend on attracting these traded sector companies and moving to the single sales factor, which we began in 1991 and really completed in 2005, has had a huge impact on our state from Nike to Intel to Precision Cast Parks to Genetech. And I think the uh, company uh, simply wants some security in terms of their investment climate, given that it's a global company. It's making a significant capital investment uh, on the assumption that the current tax policies will be continued into the future. Uh, and uh, I think it's uh, imminently reasonable as part of a negotiation to give them some assurance that this capital investment is going to be based on existing tax law for a negotiated period of time. So what you would be doing in the special session was assuring them that there's a, somehow lock it in so that the legislature, if it decided it wanted to change the tax, couldn't on that particular... Yes, yeah, so the leg proposed legislation is not a contract. It authorizes the governor and the Department of Revenue to enter into a contract. Uh, the sideboards are there has to be a minimum of 500 jobs and a minimum capital investment of $150 million over a five-year period. Uh, I would look at other factors, particularly the wages of those jobs, because this isn't about creating 500 minimum wage jobs. It's about creating 500 jobs that are going to drive per capita income in the direction that we want it to go. I'd probably look at economic multipliers and other factors. But once that agreement has been signed for a specified period of time, if the legislature were to choose to repeal or modify the single sales factor, that would not apply to that company for that uh, period of time that's been negotiated in the contract. So this doesn't provide any additional incentives. <clears throat> it's not, in a, a sense, a tax expenditure. In no, there's, there's no impact. This is, uh, I would argue, it's certainly revenue neutral. I would argue that it's revenue positive because if you create another, you know, uh, 12,000 jobs, it's going to have an impact on the general fund. This is essentially a continuation of Oregon's existing tax policy. Do you have a, a meeting with Nike scheduled to sign such a contract uh, in the legislature? Well, I think I'll uh, make sure to give the legislature an opportunity to act first, and uh, then I would hope they have a meeting. <laughs> Does the uh, federal fiscal cliff enter into the urgency for Nike on this? No, I think the, the fiscal cliff obviously has implications uh, throughout the country, but I think this is a, a, a business decision that the company needs to make and needs to make in a, in a rather uh, a short period of time. Do you expect the legislature to complete this in one business day? That would be my fervent hope. And initially we were, it was said it would be next Monday, and now you're saying Friday. Was there a reason for that? Yeah, it was basically just people looking at their schedules and when we could actually get uh, a quorum uh, into the building. And, you know, they're, they're going to be here this week. There are, some of them are here this week. I see Representative Greenlick back there. Uh, so I think it, it, at the end of the day, uh, it was easier for them to keep their members here at the end of this week. Was there a question? Hey, but can you... Can't describe specifically what the expansion is, but the magnitude of it is to 12,000 jobs. The, 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 the potential uh, economic impact, uh, as estimated by AECOM, is over $2 billion a year, uh, 12,000 uh, jobs by 2020, 
uh, and construction, about $440 million uh, and 2,900 jobs. <clears throat> Is there something within the current tax code that the company is pointing to that's creating some uncertainty? No, I think the, uh, as I said, you know, in 1991, um, uh, when I was still in the Senate, we voted to begin to double the weight of the sales factor in terms of, uh, in terms of estimating a corporate income tax burden. Uh, in 2002, I believe, we decided to phase out property value and payroll and just rely on the single sales factor. In 2005, the legislature made that decision. So a lot of the companies, the big companies that we have, the big traded sector companies that we have, <clears throat> have expanded and invested here because of that tax policy. Genentech will tell you that that's why they came to Oregon. So they just want to make sure if they're going to, given the options that this global company has to, to locate, um, they uh, want to, uh, uh, clearly they want to stay here in Oregon, but they want assurance if they're going to make this huge capital expenditure and investment that it, the tax policy that's, that's essentially making it favorable for them to operate here does not change uh, on them somewhere midstream. So essentially, it's an extension of our existing tax policy. It's simply saying to a company that wants to invest in our state that, yeah, you know something, we're going to give you predictability in, in your investment climate. If you make the uh, investment based on these rules, we're not going to change the rules on you. Is there a level of unpredictability because of uh, what uh, one of our colleagues wrote about just recently about this lawsuit having to do with the single sales factor and, and whether that might uh, uh, force a change in it or, or cause not to my not to my knowledge There's that no that, is, that issues never come up in the conversations we've had governor when after measures 66 and 67 <coughs> had passed uh there were rumblings of nike about nike and phil knight and talk about other companies saying they might move uh, do you wish to reflect on uh, the fact that nike has stayed and have Measures 66 and 67 had a negative impact on the business? Um, not really. I mean, I think that the, there are a lot of factors that companies uh, uh, consider in terms of locating and expanding. Uh, and I, I think clearly, you know, Oregon, uh, for, the, for, for companies like a Genentech or an Intel <clears throat> or Precision Cast Parts, which are other Fortune 500 companies, the, the sales, single sales factor is a, is a really big deal for them. And uh, so I think this uh, is simply just a, a um, reflection of the uh, interest in being here and the interest of having some kind of predictability of the uh, tax climate. What other states have, has Nike indicated that they possibly could choose over Oregon? They have not discussed that with me. But back on the urgency of this, I mean, did they, did you, were you getting indications that they couldn't wait and that, that they might choose to go to another state if you didn't act as soon as you're acting now? They, they didn't say, if you don't do this, we're, we're leaving. But what they did say is we have active uh, negotiations going with a, a number of states and a number of sites. Uh, and we will continue those because we have an urgency to uh, make a decision uh, about our expansion. But uh, if you can give us some certainty in the investment climate, we will uh, stay here in Oregon. And to me, that's enough. I, 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 I'm very glad to have that company here. Uh, I want it to stay here. I think it's good for them. I think it's particularly good for the state of Oregon. Do you anticipate a lot of other companies tr trying to use this new legislation if it passes? And do you end up creating a tax code where uh, all, a whole bunch of different companies are subject to different tax codes based on whatever was in place at the time they signed the Well, first of all, you, I, I don't think that there's any uh, chance or very little chance that the, that the legislature is going to alter the single sales factor in the future. It's clearly been of great benefit to Oregon, and a lot of states are actually moving in that direction. But it's a pretty high bar. I mean, the threshold uh, to uh, participate is you have to make a commitment to create 500 jobs and at least $150 million of capital investment in five years. And again, uh, the governor gets to make some, put some sideboards on that. So for example, uh, I would not approve a company that uh, spent $150 million and created uh, 500 minimum wage jobs. That's not what we're trying to do here in Oregon. So I think you can, if you, if you think about who, are, who is it around here that can meet that, it's, it's, it's a pretty small group. You know, uh, data centers, uh, invest more than uh, probably $150 million, but they don't create anywhere near 500 jobs. So uh, this is a, a, a new economic development tool. Uh, I'm glad that we get to try it out, or hopefully get to try it out on, uh, on, uh, on a nice homegrown company. But it gives us an additional tool that doesn't require uh, the expenditure of really tight resources in the general fund budget, but simply provides predictability. And if you ask just about any business, uh, if you ask the, uh, the people down in Southern Oregon who operate timber mills who need to make an investment 
in, in those mills, they're not going to make that investment because they don't know really what the what the business climate's going to be long term. So this is, uh, to me, a, an excellent addition to our uh, toolbox uh, for uh, moving in the direction of uh, improving our jobs and, uh, and our economy. So is this about the Nike only, though? I mean, is this no, absolutely not. I mean, there's no question that the sense of urgency for having the legislature in has to do with this particular company. But this is a policy that makes a great deal of sense. And I think it makes it, 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 it allows Oregon to sort of stand apart. We're a small state. Uh, we have a very tight general fund budget. We don't have the resources in our school system that we'd like right now. We don't want to take any of those dollars and have to get into a bidding war with some larger, more well-heeled state. What we can say is, look, in Oregon, if you meet certain criteria, we'll give you some predictability about uh, uh, becoming part of our corporate community or remaining part of our corporate community. We have one more question. We have when did Nike come to you about this? Uh, it was uh, probably a, uh, maybe a month, month and a half ago. They began. They told me that they were in this process. Is the legislation you're seeking specific to the single sales factor, or is it the tax code as a whole? I believe it's the tax code as a whole. I haven't seen the the, late, the bill draft, but I believe it's the the, the current. Um, um, uh, tax tax code, uh, but you know I have to say by the way that the the shape in, uh, of this particular bill is going to is going to be determined by the Oregon legislature. We'll propose a bill draft. Uh, I'm sure that they'll they'll have hearings hearings this week, and there'll be an opportunity to really examine <coughs> the content. Thank you all. We have press yeah. packets available for everyone here. <coughs> Thank you. Yep. Yeah.